guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, when I am on my thrifting adventures, we all know that it's the holiday time, it's Christmas time. So I love to go through the Christmas items. I love to give tired Christmas items new life. So this is what today's video is all about, where I took some just unwanted, tired, needed a updating Christmas items and I gave them new life. And what I do with them is I resell them in my retail booth. But if you're not a reseller, you know, this is just an idea of that, or it's something that you could do for your own home. So this is what today's video is all about, updating you with some tired and unwanted Christmas items. So here's the first little item that I had run across when I was out thrifting, this cute little wagon, though it definitely needed a updating, especially with that arrangement. And then even though this sled is cute, the sleigh ride is cute, I wasn't really a fan of the greenery around it and I wanted to give it a little bit more of the white that I like to paint. And then three matching reindeer, yes please. Even though they were a little bit on the sparkly side, I could still see getting them painted up. And for 509 for the whole set, what a great price. So the first thing I do is assess any of that greenery to see if there's anything that I can reuse, but I think it was beyond that point. And then I just needed to unwrap this garland of greenery that was on the sleigh. There was about four pieces on this. I had really had no idea. And then for me, I wasn't really a fan of the overly chunky jute roping that was on the front of this so i was going to just cut that off now my next step was just to hand sand any of the writing any of the painted on nice and smooth so when i give it its paint job it is nice and smooth and you won't see that previous paint job and now i'm looking to see if i can remove both sets of these wheels I can only remove the front one. I'm just a fan of painting things separately. The back wheels were nailed on, so I didn't want to accidentally break it by trying to remove that, so I will just move this front one. And now it's, it's the sled's turn to get sanded. This was pretty smooth uh, already, so I didn't have to sand this awful much. I don't know if it was just like a kind of a stamp, where they just imprinted it. It wasn't hand painted on, so it didn't take much for me to sand that smooth. Now my next step was to clean these two pieces off with some crud cutter. Remember these were thrifted items. I want to get any kind of residue, any gunk, any oils that might have been left behind that will prevent my paint from sticking. So I'm just giving them a good cleaning. So even though this sled is real wood, I'm going to be choosing to use Rust-Oleum's Paint and Primer in one. Just the way that the bottom part is attached to the sled, the skis, it's just easier to get in there with a coat of spray paint just to get this undercoat covered. So for this little wagon, I want to keep this black. I'm definitely sure of that. So what I'm doing is I'm just giving it a coat of the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. It's got this metal wheels and it's a small little item and this will just give it the smoothest finish. So there's always a reason that somebody <laughs> donates to a thrift store. So on these little beautiful, very glittery reindeer, the problem was that somebody must have put them near something that was kind of cottony, some fake snow. So all that fake snow, those little cotton threads had stuck to that glitter. So what I did here is I just wrapped my hand in some tape and I'm just trying to get most of that cotton, all those cotton threads off of these. So note to self, if you have something glittery, do not put it in your Christmas storage next to something that's cottony. So now that I've gotten hopefully 99% of the little fibers off of these cute little reindeer, I am going to be painting them white. I'm just using the Rust-Oleum in the flat white. And with these little reindeer, because of all the little horns and the crevices, I'm going to have to flip them and flop them a few times. 
but the paint will f fill in where the glitter was. You won't really be able to really notice it. It'll just give them that clean look of some beautiful white deer. So now that the bottom part of my black is dry, I can flip these two items over and get them completely colored now on the top part of them. And then after the Rust-Oleum flat black is dry, I'm going to move on to my polycrylic. For this piece, it's going to be its top coat. It's going to be sealing all that paint in. And then for the little sled, it'll be an in-between before I move on to the white paint. That just helps stick that black there. So when I, as this one, it's going to be its final coat. But the, for the sled, it's going to be the coat before I paint it white. That'll just help keep that black on there. So when I go to distress it, the black doesn't just sand off. And then now that the polycrylic's dry, I can move on to painting this. I'm going to give it a nice coat of the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in flat white. That just will get a lot of the black covered as a base white coat. And then I'm going to finish this sled up using my Kills paint and primer. I just like this white a little bit better than the Rust-Oleum paint. I like how it covers. It gave a nice base to it, but I like the warm white of this kills so i'll just be giving this a couple coats of that to finish up the sled so now i move on to a couple wreaths that i had thrifted i love that they had a base i loved the price of them but they were in dire need of some help they were kind of lifeless i think the pine cones were a little too big i think the berries were a little too fake so now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to first remove the price tag and then I'm going to go in and remove those overly large pine cones along with those very fake waxy berries. And then if you're wondering, I will save those pine cones if they're in good shape and not smashed, but the berries I will just be throwing away. So if you watched my hanging tin Christmas arrangements, these are some greenery that I have had since last year that I thrifted that were missing parts or smashed. So that's what I like to do. I like to look for greenery when I'm out thrifting all year long and pick up pieces and parts that I know that I can make new greenery with. Even though the one item didn't look so good, I maybe I can put two items like I'm doing here and make it look fuller. So what I'm doing is I'm lifting up those pieces of evergreen and I'm going to be sticking this boxwood pieces in the middle of it. It may seem a little weird at first because one is so long and one is so short, but you need something underneath there to lift that up to make it not look so tired and lazy. And the box would, will be the perfect accent color for this evergreen. So all I'm doing is when I was able to pull this boxwood off of its wreath, that it had five little stems that were attached to one stem. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some hot glue and I am putting it on that stem. And then what I'll do is there is some wire that has been wrapped around that grapevine wreath and I'm tucking it underneath there to make sure that it's nice and secure. So what I'll do next is what I'm gonna be doing with this boxwood is I'm going to be putting it in between every grouping of that evergreen doing the same thing where I take some of that hot glue, glue it, and then find that little piece of wire and tuck it underneath. And why I'm working my way around, if you could tell at the beginning that some of these evergreen stems were falling out, so I'm actually re-gluing them as I work around and pushing them in. And there's really three pieces of them, so I'm kind of making one stay in the middle, one go to the right, one go to the left, you know, towards the center. So I'm kind of fluffing those out as I work around and I know that this had some of that fakey icy on there but I am not worried about that as I'm working with it actually most of it is falling off so now that I've glued that boxwood in and repositioned all those evergreen stems I'm going around and I'm kind of pushing on the wreath I want it to stay in that circle form and making sure that everything is attached and everything's kind of turned the right way and as you see, some of these are still a little bit loose and I needed a little bit more 
filler in one area because some of them are long and some of them are shorter. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making that circle and just making sure that everything flows in one direction. And then I will go back in if I think that there's too much of that boxwood in the middle of it or add a little bit to the sides of it just to make it nice and full. This is a thrifted wreath. This is a thrifted boxwood that was in dire need of help. So I do not feel bad cutting any of this up and regluing to make something new. And I'm not sure if you're a fan of, I like the different textures of different greeneries put in together. I just love the visual of that all. So like I said, I'm just trying to make sure that everything's going in the same direction, that there's not any holes, and that it's nice and full. I may look, it may look like a hot mess to you, but trust me, it is definitely starting to look a lot better. So now what I'm doing is now I've got my sides filled out, I've got it lifted up, and so I'm laying a couple pieces along the whole circle of it all, of the boxwood on the top, just for some little bit more of a visual so you can definitely see the two different textures in this wreath. So here is how it is looking so far. Here's it lifted up. Here you can definitely tell that there's some evergreen and some, there's some boxwood in there. And of course I feel like I'm always going back through and getting the stringies off from the hot glue. So now that I have a greenery texture in there, I want to add some more elements. So what I'm doing here is I have some of those mini pine cones from the Dollar Tree. I was very happy to find those there this year. I thrifted some last year and fell in love with them. I think these are definitely more size appropriate for this size of wreath. So what I will be doing is... On the evergreen branches is where I will be attaching these little pine cones. And I like to attach them where the V's of the evergreen separate, the two branches separate. To me, when I look at a pine tree, that's where I notice that a seedling comes from, not from the tip or and not from the base. So that's where I will be attaching these cute little pine cones. Now for me, I just work the whole entire way around the circle of the wreath just eyeballing what is visually appealing to my eye where to put these pine cones i i don't really think you can go wrong when you're doing something just do it until you love it and that's how i'm working these pine cones so now i'm adding one more element i had thrifted this wreath last year too these berries were all smashed. You can see that they were some of that were broken. So I picked this up for a couple bucks because I absolutely love the realistic look of these berries and I love adding it into my arrangements for the Christmas season. So what I'm doing is just cutting some of these off and going to be attaching it into this greenery wreath. I don't know if you've ever looked up at the price of berries, but berries usually are not a very cheap thing when you're going to add them in, or that if they are a little bit more inexpensive, they're very waxy and very fakey looking. So I was very excited to run across that wreath last year. I just love how I'm able to use just a little bit of this and cut basically cut these little stems down to two pieces to fit them in and just that pop of red i just absolutely love what it does to this this wreath so now for these little deer they're all freshened with their new coat of white paint and i just like to add one little bit more detail on them i just have some of this ribbon that i actually it's left over from last year a little bit of this ribbon goes a long way when you're just giving these deer a little scarf to keep them nice and warm so all i do for this ribbon is i just try to keep it centered so my tails are the same length and then i go back in and give it a little dugtail dovetail cut just to give them that little v's but then before i nice and tighten that knot i do hot glue it so that it stays in place that it's not moving all over the place just a little bit of my ocd i don't want it to be um, moving on and then i will tighten up that knot a little bit and i'll do the same thing with the the little tails that are hanging i will hot glue those a little bit so they don't move also and that kind of helps them from preventing them from getting smushed. 
And yes, I could have put the same bow on all three of them, but I had three different black and white, so why not use three different ones on each individual deer? So I did think of painting something on this little wagon, but once I had this white ribbon out and I had a couple spools left over from last year, I thought this would be a great accent to go around this wagon, so I'm just hot gluing it in place. And then for one more detail, I'm just taking some of this baker's twine, this black and white baker's twine that I got at the Dollar Tree, along with this jute, and then I'm just going to just wrap it around until it's pleasing to my eye, just to cover up where I had hot glued that, that way you don't see that where it has been glued, and then just gives one little bit more element of a surprise to this little wagon. So now I had had this bag of Epsom salt that I was doing another project with, and I thought, you know, I'm going to use this as some fake snow. When I removed that arrangement, I could not get all that rubber cement, so I definitely needed to hide it. And I didn't really feel that in a huge fake arrangement did this little wagon justice. So through all my thrifting and in going in and out of places, I collect these brush bottle trees, which I know are very hot sellers because I tried to find some more just the other day and they are all gone. So I was happy that I had these in my collection because I knew that I didn't want very big ones. So I had these two white ones that I had picked up earlier this year at Menards and then these four little green ones I had thrifted. They must have gone with the village, but I thought they looked super sweet. Just a nice simple arrangement in the back of this little wagon. And this is something, yes, you can put it up for Christmas, but you could also keep it all winter long. So this is what my other project was. I had run across these mason jars that had these handles and clear glass doesn't really sell completely well for me. So I had these little brush bottle trees that I had picked up at Walmart. I think I said Menards earlier, I'm sorry. Those white ones were from Walmart. And then I wanted an accent color, so I had found those green ones at Target for $5. And so this Epsom salt came from the Dollar Tree. So what I did is just put a little bit of that Epsom salt. I've seen, I think, a ton of people do these, but it's just a nice, simple decor. So I just put some of the Epsom salt on the bottom. And then the green trees from Target, I think it was $5 for the four of them. So I wanted that one in there first. That way you could see through this clear glass just a little bit more color. And I like the real look of that green. They didn't really have very many left to choose from, so I lucked out when I found a set of four of this green. And then I'm at just adding that simple white one just right next to them. I'm glad they're a little, the white one's a little bit shorter than the green one. I just wanted to add one more element and these little bundles of sticks actually came out of a jar that I had thrifted that had potpourri in it, potpourri, however you want to say that. And I kept all that because I just thought that was a neat little element. So I thought this was perfect to kind of stuff in there. So you it kind of blends as a snow globe, as a snowy scene, but you also get to see that little bit pop of brown and then they had these other little almost porcupine pine cones and I'm going to add one of these also as you see I'm just using my pampered chef little wooden tongs to kind of stick them in there and then for me I like how that real green and the white and that brown all play off each other so now to finish these little jars up and just give them one more decorative element. I Like I said, I had a lot of this white ribbon that apparently I didn't use much of last year, so I am going to use it up. And so it is. I'm just taking some hot glue and I am gluing it around that jar. This is a wired ribbon, and so I kind of have to glue it and kind of fit it in the little grooves of where it had a lid. And I'm just going to be doing a simple bow and then just doing those little dovetail cuts at the bottom just to just give it a little bit of more something something. 
I hope that these sell just as well. I had some lanterns that I had thrifted and redid and put pine cones and berries and greenery in the glass of it. I did about 10 for my open house and I sold all 10. So that was kind of my hope for these. I only had three of these that I could do. Just nice, simple decor pieces that you could put out for Christmas or you can leave all winter long. So I did not go through the whole process of doing both wreaths because I did them the exact same way, but I absolutely love doing, giving wreaths new lives. I love apparently working with greenery and flower arrangement, and it's the fun of the hunt of finding pieces and parts of items to put them together to make a new item. I just absolutely love how these turned out. And don't get me wrong, I love Christmas. I love the Merry Christmas saying just as much as the next guy. But I am kind of, I guess I'm boring or plain, whichever way you want to look at it. I just like my items simple when I'm doing holiday decor. So when I'm thrifting items, that is what I am looking to do. Just like taking these glittery deer and giving them a fresh white coat. I just like the simplicity of it all. And then for the sled, I did finish it up with a little bit of distressing and some very thin finishing wax just to seal and protect that paint. And I had a collection of just a similar color of these little trees that I'd picked out when I was thrifting. And I think the brush bottle came from Target. And just these, some of these balls that I had picked up also and I just think it makes for a beautiful display in this sled. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of my Christmas thrift flips? So I absolutely love doing these Christmas flips. I loved updating and giving new life to those wreaths and that little wagon. Now you could have that out more than just the Christmas season along with that little sled. Though I see it more as a riser for a table. You definitely could put it on its side and hang one of the wreaths from them if you wanted to. It, whatever the buyer wants and I absolutely love doing those deer. So I hope I have inspired you and given you some ideas when you're out thrifting of items to look thinking just with some paint I can change that into what I love. So I thank you again so much for watching today's video if you're part of my YouTube family. Thank you so much for helping my channel grow. Just you watching my videos and giving me a quick comment and a like no, lets YouTube know that you like my kind of content and they'll recommend me. And if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Thanks for watching.